So now is a great time for us to really reflect on our teaching practices and think how we can make them more engaging, interactive and inclusive and how can we uh, enhance the overall learning experience of our students. If you're one of those that I like lecturing for 15 minutes, you know, that's okay. Start small, keep on lecturing, but now think of ways that you can break once or twice the monotony of even the best 50 minute lecture and interact with your students. Uh, you can use polls in Zoom or Poll Everywhere or ask questions or give them a prompt and make your students work in groups for a few minutes. If you are in Zoom, you can use breakout rooms for that. And then come back, wrap up the question and keep on lecturing. If you're ready to go full active learning, go for it. I would recommend to record, to record the, the lectures uh, or select readings and ask, and ask students to go through that learning material before the class time. And then during class, students have more time to interact with the material in a more active and engaging way rather than being there just listening. If you want to go with pre-recorded lectures, make them short and specific, make them to the point. Think of them like a Khan Academy video where a single topic is addressed in each video. Five to 12 minutes, no more, and make as many videos as you need. Uh, use closed captions, making them accessible and appealing to all the students. The main advantage of using these short video lectures that you can record using Panopto or Zoom is that students can watch them at their own pace and time when they are on the bus, when they have a break at work or at night. And the cool part is that they can watch them as many times as they need, once or a thousand times. Because students watch those videos or do those readings ahead of time, now we don't have to use our synchronous class session, that precious time that we share with the students to lecture because the content has been already delivered. Now when we ask uh, our students to apply the information that they are dealing with that day, we can make them talk and think and challenge them. And it is when students talk to each other, when they are engaged in conversations, when they have to explain stuff to their peers and argue sometimes, that's when magic happens and when that is when students learn. Uh, and that's what we call evidence-based teaching of active learning. Um, and there's tons of research indicating that active learning increases everyone's examination performance, uh, decreases failure rates, and reduces the achievement gap between students from marginalized groups and other students. And we can do active learning online. How does this look like? Well, it depends on how many students you have, if you have TAs, what is your teaching style? What they must all have in common is there has to be an environment where students feel comfortable participating, participating where they are challenged, uh, where they usually work in groups, and an environment where we as instructors can provide feedback. It is important to know that active learning is not black or white. It's not all or nothing. It can range from a single question or Zoom or Poll Everywhere to use an entire session, having your students in breakout rooms working on a case study or a series of questions. And research suggests that even those small active learning interventions in your class, even the small ones, have a positive impact on students' learning and course performance. If you're looking for uh, some ideas, I recently did a seminar for a pop-up series uh, of the Center for Teaching and Learning and is available online. Feel free to explore it. Um, I know these are hard times for everyone, for students, of course, but also for us. Uh, think of this time as a moment to reflect on your teaching. And once we all return back to campus, you may find yourself actually using many of the strategies that you are implementing online um, keep me posted on how that goes. Good luck. Ciao.